All right, good people. This is Don't Believe the Hype, NFL Week 5. Again, the good, the bad, the ugly of fantasy sports. I'm Maurice. And I'm Marcus. Yeah, feeling good, man. Just got my cut. Feeling like my man Loaded Lux, man. My team is healthy right now because, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I got Doug Baldwin back this week. Um, he had a three-game suspension, so I have him, and actually I think all of my leagues, uh, I draft him late in the round, so I'm excited. He's playing tonight against the Patriots. I think they're going to work him right in, so feeling good about that. But before we talk about week five, let's do a recap, because who lived up to the hype for you last week? Got to give it to Ty Gurley and Zeke. Uh, both of them combined, if you started them on your – Zeke had a rushing touchdown. And Gurley had a long touchdown catch. Had a rushing touchdown as well. Uh, also, Deshaun Watson. He was definitely the player quarterback. He wasn't highly owned going up against a suspect. Uh, Titan secondary. He shredded him for four touchdown passes as well as a rushing touchdown. I know I started him on my FanDuel squad. He got me close to 35 FanDuel points. Also, uh, DeAndre Hopkins, if you kind of did a mini stack with uh, Lamar Miller, who also went off and had a, a great game. Uh, Deshaun, Lamar Miller, DeAndre Hopkins should have did fairly well on the, you know, FanDuel, DraftKings, those uh, DFS sites. And if you had them on your season long, you should have got the W, such as I did. Uh, I had Lamar Miller and Todd Gurley. As my running backs, and Lamar Miller finally paid off for me, definitely, definitely. And uh, also, um, picking on the Browns, you know, Andy Dalton had a, a, a fairly good game, as well as Giovanni Bernard had a receiving touchdown. And Tyler Croft, uh, Tyler Eifert's replacement at tight end, had two catches. I had two touchdown catches. I agree. He went to Boston and did his thing, the uh, redemption game, because the prior uh, three games weren't so good for him statistically. So finally he got you some passing touchdowns, got you some rushing yards as well. So those are some of the guys for me. How about you? Man, you, you, that's my whole list, man. <laughs> he, ah, ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. right. So since I got, I'm a cross off all my names. So, I'm just going to go ahead and tell you who didn't live up to the hype. Uh, <laughs> going back to that uh, the Bengals game, again, like you said, Andy Dalton was definitely clicking. For me, it was Joe Mixon. Uh, the last two weeks, he's got 21 touches. So the touches are there, but mm -hmm. he's not producing the yards, and he's definitely not getting into the end zone. Um, but what's kind of been a saving grace, if you have been playing him in PPR leagues, he's catching a ton of balls. So – Hopefully, if he could, if the production continues, um, which I think it will, he'll find the end zone. He'll break some long runs, and he'll earn that. Um, he'll earn that grade, you know, that, that he was uh, drafted so high. Another guy, uh, Antonio Brown, uh, four catches, thirty-four yards on nine targets. That was not an Antonio Brown uh, type of game, so I was a little disappointed from that from that standpoint. Um, and then, of course, Matt Ryan uh, against Buffalo, against the three and one Buffalo Bills. The uh, two and three. He's leading Buffalo Bills. He, exactly. Yes. <laughs> Came on the Patriots for allowing that to happen. But um, he threw two interceptions. He only threw one touchdown. And um, he hasn't been the Matty Ice that we, you know, we've uh, grown to love. Um, but now that I think about it, you did save someone for me. Uh, Jerome Brown, he has lived up to the hype the last few weeks. Uh, the Cardinals wide receiving core, actually the Cardinals team in, in the whole is is pretty uh, pretty much in shambles. We already know that they have a three headed monster running back. Apparently they have a three or four hit headed monster wide receiver. You, you have Larry Fitzgerald who literally has one cleat out of the door. Um, <laughs> You've got J.J. Nelson, who, um, again, is very talented um, receiver, um, but he's very frail. 
Um, so he, the last few weeks you've seen, he's been a little banged up. And in my opinion, the most talented receiver on the team is John Brown. And he's been dealing with injuries, just not just this season, but the last few years. So Jerome Brown, who's a big target, has been able to step in for Carson Palmer and been like a, a nice little safety blanket for him the last couple of weeks. Um, this was last week was a, a, a deciding, um, deciding fact that we got to see that he still was heavily involved with John Brown back with J.J. Nelson back, and, of course, Larry Fitzgerald uh, being there. So I think that moving forward, Jerron Brown is a is one of the uh, Cardinals to possibly own. All right, so did you have any uh, players that didn't live up to the hype for you last week? Uh, um, just the Tennessee Titans in general. Uh, they just got steamrolled from the jump, and – None of the guys – I mean, Mariota gave you a rushing touchdown, but then he exited the game with a hamstring injury. Uh, Rashad Matthews, you know, his, his at this point, his clear-cut number one target, you know, I mean, he didn't pay off with a touchdown. He had six catches, but he didn't really do much after that. Um, I got to say, hmm, Chris Thompson from the Redskins. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> you know, he was coming on as a PPR guy True. that you wanted to target. You know, he was the home run hitter for the Redskins, but didn't do a thing against Kansas City. He didn't even single. <laughs> yeah. He didn't even get on base, you right. know. Didn't even get on didn't, no hit by pitch, right. no four pitch walk, <laughs> no balk, right. no nothing. Right. <laughs> yeah. He got one foot out the batter's box, and it was a line out. Like, it was just go sit back down. That was, that was pretty much it. Right. right. All of the Ravens. <laughs> yeah. Derek Carr got folded up like a, a lawn chair. Pants, yeah. A lawn chair. You know, he's out two to six weeks now. We'll get to that in the waiver wire portion, but. Man, those are just some of the guys. Uh, yeah, that's all I. That's all I got. Yeah. It, it was a lot. It was a matter of fact. All of the Dolphins. Uh, once again, yes. you know, I felt like the Dolphins were a, a decent matchup as far as offensive weapons. The Jarvis Landry, Kenny Stills, Devontae Parker, Ajayi, even a Jay Cutler to target against the Saints. And once again, the Saints came out like. The, the Ravens defenses of the early 2000s and shut down the Dolphins just like they shut down Carolina the prior week. So I don't have individual players like that. I have whole teams <laughs> that just completely just Bro. did not show up. Yeah, I agree. Um, yeah, especially, like, the, like you said, the Dolphins against the, the Saints. Um, and for anyone that's wondering, you know, what happened to Jay Cutler, in the words of Denny Green, Jay Cutler is who he thought <laughs> he thought you were. I mean, Jay Cutler is not a good quarterback. I mean, Jay Cutler can throw the ball um, he when he wants to. So again, if if you if you putting him in your money lineups, don't don't hold your breath. I'll say that much. But um, I, you know, last week also big injuries, big devastating injuries. You mentioned. Derek Carl, who um, he's out two to six weeks. You know, I, I saw the. I don't even know if you want to call that a hit or if, I don't. Uh, that was like a pancake kind of deal. But um, when Del Rio said back spasms, I, I I said I know. I didn't know what he was talking about because what I saw that definitely wasn't back spasms. So I knew he was going to miss some time. Um, but some some running backs that really. That were really, I, honestly, I felt like could carry your team. Um, Chris Carson, but more importantly, Dalvin Cook. Dalvin Cook was looking really good early in the season. Uh, him and Kareem Hunt were the top rookie running backs, and they were they essentially were probably top five running backs. Period. So, what do you say to someone that lost one of those running backs, or is without Derek Carr for the next two to six weeks? Ah, man. At this point, we're when we're we are in week five, waiver wire. It's slim pickings. 
I'm sure Deshaun Watson may, if he wasn't the top waiver pickup, he was he was very close to it. So I would say in the event that you do lose a Derek Carr and you do need a quarterback, hey, you know, try to give him a shot. I would have I if Deshaun's not there, I would say Jared Goff, but he's going up against the Seahawks this week. So at this point, we have seen what they did with Jacoby Brissett on Sunday night. A rookie, I mean, it, it, it's pretty, it's pretty tough. If you're in a complete bind, I would go with Jared Goff um, if Deshaun's not there, because at this point, I'm pretty sure you're dealing with maybe the Josh McCowns of the world, the Deshaun Kaisers of the world, even the Jacoby Brissetts and Brian Hoyers of the world. It, it, it's pretty tough at quarterback to find solid production outside of, uh, honestly, a Deshaun Watson. He was probably the last solid fantasy pickup for what he does on the ground as well as in the air. So that's going to be a tough, you know, makeup at that position for you if you're in a bind at, for a quarterback. Running back, I would say give Aaron Jones a shot from Green Bay. Looks like Ty Montgomery's going to be out with the rib injury. If you don't have uh, the top priority in that position for a running back, maybe go with uh, Eddie Lacy in a bounce back. I mean, he's a de facto number one. They went away from him in a the preseason. They thought Thomas Rawls was going to be the guy. He's not. They thought Chris Carson was going to be the guy. He's not. Some guy by the name of J.D. McKissick came on and, and had two scores. So he may even be the guy. So I would say you're probably better off getting some production from a running back through waivers than you would a quarterback. So those are just some of the guys at, at right now on the surface, you know. Okay. Maybe even a Duke Johnson. If Duke Johnson's still out there, he's like the poor man's Chris Thompson. Hugh Jackson does utilize him you know, out of the backfield and pass catching opportunities and on the ground too. So that's kind of all I got. I mean, it's, it's pretty scarce out here at this point. I mean, now if you're in a 12 team uh, fantasy league, then there's still some out there. But if you're in a 14, like most of us, it, it's tough. Yeah. It's pretty tough. And if you're in a 16, oh, bit, I'm sorry, there's nothing out there in a 16. Yeah. Agreed. Agreed. And another back too, um, um, for the, the Dalvin Cook owners, if you, um, if he was still there, uh, Latavius Murray, I mean, he's not going to trust me. He's not going to give you nowhere near the production of Dalvin Cook. But again, he is a starting NFL running back. He will get opportunities too. So exactly. And again, right. keep in mind, look what he did last year at Oakland. We understand that he's not a great running back, but he's definitely serviceable running back um, and quarterback. If, you know, in your league, if Andy Dalton, Eli Manning, those are some other names that may be available. Ugh, Eli. But, again, <laughs> look, look, if if it's out of Eli Manning, if it's, if it's out of a man, if it's between Josh McCown and any Manning, Archie, gotta Eli, go. Eli, I'm taking a Manning over McCown. So, you know, and if you have to start – Josh McCown, any week you probably shouldn't be playing fantasy football. I mean, I'm just also uh, Will Fuller, Will Fuller the fourth from the Texans. Will Fuller, yes, the fourth. Scores. Yes, Deshaun utilized the second wide out finally, which freed up opportunities for DeAndre Hopkins, which I'm sure he's happy about that he finally has a respectable quarterback back there who will throw him the ball, and not the 26 previous quarterbacks that he's gone through in Houston. Right. Agreed. Agreed. And that was Will Fuller's first game yeah. uh, back. So he, he balled out. So, so for week five, who are you hyped about? Uh, I am hyped about the Steelers. They're going against Jacksonville. I feel like they're due for it. I feel like this offense is ready to, to break out. I know Ben's numbers on the road, are, they're terrible. They're so-so. But at home, he's much better. Uh, they got to feed Antonio Brown because he's he's pissed off. So I feel like this is the get-fat the, the get game for Antonio. 
Uh, Le'Veon had a, a great game against the Ravens. So I feel like they're beginning to click offensively, and it's a good spot for them against Jacksonville at home. You know, Jacksonville's been getting – their defense has been getting, you know, a lot of turnovers against so-so teams, the Jets for one, honestly the Ravens for another, uh, and the Titans. Well, not necessarily Titans, but the Texans when they were – before they made the quarterback change. So those are the three teams with horrible offenses – that Jacksonville took advantage of. They weren't able to take advantage of a sophisticated offense in Tennessee. So I feel like Pittsburgh is due for offensive breakthrough in the air. All right. I have a question before we go any further. Sure. Are those <laughs> sure. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Are those prescription glasses? Yes, they are. I, mean, I, I, I just want to make sure because I want to understand what you're seeing out of those glasses that I'm not seeing with my two eyes. Uh, well, we honestly, <laughs> well, honestly, the matchups this week are, are, is average at best. I mean, nobody really sticks out. Uh, maybe Arizona, Philly, that game should be a high scoring game, you know, between a defense that should, that's not living up to the hype at all in Arizona. And Carson Wentz is having a productive season under Doug Peterson. So I, I look for that game to be pretty high scoring at times. Um, honestly, I, I really – if Deshaun Watson did that against the Titans secondary, I feel like Jay Cutler can do that against the Titans secondary. I feel like he's due for one. This week, honestly, the thing for this week for me is the do theory. That a lot of these teams that, who haven't been clicking off offensively, who came into the season, top five, top ten offenses, in my opinion, they're due for it. Okay. And they have matchups that, that prove that they are due for it. They just have to go do it, if that makes sense. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, I want to go back to this Pittsburgh theory that you had. <laughs> now we saw last week what uh what uh Brown did. Now again, I understand he's frustrated, so you would think quite naturally that offense is gonna take out take that aggression out of the next team. But let's not forget that the Jacksonville Jaguars probably have the best cornerback duo in the league. So it doesn't matter if Patrick Ramsey sticks him or AJ Boye sticks him. They both have the ability to essentially shut him down. And that pass rush can get to Big Ben. So um, again, Pittsburgh's offense can score with the best of them, and like you said, they're playing at home. But I have my reservations, so you know I, we, we're going to we're going to go ahead and we'll just mark that down. Pittsburgh, you said Pittsburgh, but in my opinion, I'm I'm actually targeting the Dallas and the Green Bay game. Um, and I I mean honestly that that game next to the the Patriots and the um. Buccaneers game, which, you know, we know that's going to be a lot of fireworks. This is the second highest um, uh, total. Mm -hmm. So in this game, I'm actually going to target quite a few players. Um, Des Bryant, uh, Dak Prescott is peppering targets to this guy. I mean, he, he's he got he, he's got a 16-target game, if I'm not mistaken. He's got 12-target game, a 9-target game. So he, he has one game where he, he had two targets but he's getting a lot of targets in against the Green Bay defense that we know it's going to be a high-scoring game. So I'm going Des Bryant. I'm going J.J. Um, JJ Nelson. I'm going uh, Jordy. Jordy, <laughs> Jordy Nelson. And then um, I'm going to play – I'm probably going to play Aaron Rodgers. And so I'm going to do two lineups. One's going to have Aaron Rodgers. The other lineup is going to have um, Dak, Pre Dak Prescott or Dakota Prescott, whatever you want to call him. And uh -huh. I'm even going to probably play uh, – Zeke. So for me, I'm playing four players from that game, and I'm throwing in Charles Clay because Charles Clay, um, in case anyone doesn't know, is the number one receiver on the uh, Buffalo Bills. Um, even before Jody Nelson, Jody Nelson, what am I? No, even before Jordan Matthews got hurt last week, right. Charles Clay was the number one pass catching target on that team. So I expect that, that to continue. So I'm um, Again, Green Bay, Dallas game, I'm targeting very heavily. And I'm going to throw in um, 
maybe Duke Johnson, that running back, that's someone you mentioned earlier. He's getting a lot of targets out of the backfield. And Charles Clay, that's those are those pretty much any line I'm playing this, uh, this weekend is going to have that core in it. Uh-huh. All right. Also, uh, Bilal Powell from uh, the Jets <clears throat> going up against the Browns run defense. So that's always one if you're in a bind salary. And, and like a salary league, if you're in a bind, should be on the cheap. I agree. Yeah. That's another that's another good play. If you're playing in uh like DraftKings where you have a flex, um a matter of fact I have I have Bilal Powell, I have Duke Johnson, and I like that um I like that um combination a lot. Even considering Andre Ellington um for this week. It, you know, depending on you know what I need to do to get these guys in to get Green Bay and uh, Dallas exposure, I'll do what I have to do. But um before we go, uh, again First half, well, first quarter of the season. Um, looking at what you've seen through the first four games, who is your first quarter MVP? <sighs> Got to go Ty Gurley from the Rams. I mean, he's been doing it all for them. He's been doing it out of the backfield, on the ground. He's been doing it out of the backfield, pass catching. He's the sole reason that they're three and one, honestly. They, you know, that was a huge win going down to Dallas and, and matching up with Dak and Zeke and Dez. You know, they held their own, you know, Jared Goff and Todd Gurley is pretty much a two-person operation. I mean, Sammy Watkins, outside of the 49ers game, hasn't really done much. So I would have to say it's, it's Todd Gurley for the things he can do, the versatility, you know, PPR, as well as on the ground. How about you? I I like that. I like that selection. I'm going to actually go with uh, an un, unsung hero, Alex Smith. Uh, the Chiefs. That's a good one. That's a good one. They're a four. He hasn't turned that ball over at all. Exactly right. He he's playing playing great football. They're four and zero. He's completing seventy six percent of his passes, and he has nine total touchdowns. Um, another thing that I think is very impressive for a quarterback with Alex, Alex Smith's skill set, he is on pace for his first 4,000-yard season. So these are all the reasons why I like him for first quarter MVP. But let's even rewind it back a little further. Um, Alex Smith, this is his fifth year with, with the Chiefs. So prior to this season, he's got nearly a 3-1 to one, uh, touchdown and interception ratio. He's never had a season where he's completed less than 60% of his passes. And he gets the Chiefs into the playoffs, it seems like, every year. And they rewarded this guy, they think this guy, by trading up to get his replacement, Pat Mahomes. Pat Mahomes. <laughs> and honestly, Pat Mahomes is the complete opposite of Alex Smith. Alex Smith is a check down, conservative, uh, kind of quarterback, and the Kansas City Chiefs offense was built around that. But Alex Smith said, okay, I got something for y'all. And Alex Smith, he became, and again, you usually you usually don't, you're not able to reinvent yourself after being in the NFL for, for a decade, but Alex Smith showed that he could. Alex Smith showed that he could be the quarterback that the Kansas City Chiefs wanted the whole time. And I don't know how long he's going to be able to hold them off. I don't know if it's going to be just for this season. But I think this season will be Alex Smith's best season. And that is why I have him for first quarter MVP. And that's why I like the Chiefs coming out of the West against the Raiders. <laughs> Listen, uh, that's a good choice. Uh, considering it's a three-person operation in Kansas City, well, four-person with Kareem Hunt, Travis Kelsey, Tyreek Hill, and Alex Smith. I mean, it's it's really no uh, – Andy Reid doesn't hit you with anything new. The, he's been doing the same things in Philly. Right. He's doing the same thing in Kansas City. Everybody knows who's getting the ball, and you still can't beat it right. because Alex Smith doesn't turn the ball over. And he's nifty. He's still got, he's still got legs. He's still mobile after all these years. And he just he makes great choices with the ball, you know. 
So I, I definitely I can see Alex Smith being first quarter MVP. All right. All right. Well, again, that's all we have this week. Don't believe the hype. NFL week five. I am Maurice. And I'm Marcus. Signing out. Good luck, everyone.